get away from Haggerty. You will be you will be insulted. You will be ridiculed. You'll be denigrated. All you think about is how Dodge gets scammed into building a car that never existed. Budweiser, Bush, Haggerty, uh, the Black Ghost. These are things that can never be fixed. And it was your greed or stupidity in an ideology that made you destroy it. Now you live with it and the consequences because we vote with our dollars. Where? <clears throat> Where was this concern? When you sold that? From sheer heart attack, we are back. This is Rip Roaring Garage, and I am Alex. Back from a heart attack. More energy than ever. Maybe it's a lie. But we're going to get into Haggerty because a lot of things have changed. And some of you guys may have felt it. Uh, I know I have. And I will get into that. I will actually show portions of the conversation I had with them regarding why they're dumping paying customers seems like a not so smart business move let's figure out what happened with Haggerty in recent years and i think it was like three years ago but uh let's skate okay this is the current ceo and i know personally i would like to have an octagon match with him but i don't think he has the guts to take on even a broken guy like me but eh, whatever i can dream two things separately ended up combining into one single story and hence one video. What happened with me was uh, when I was due for renewing my insurance policy with Haggerty, I call up and say, oh, no, no, you don't owe us anything. You're, we're non-renewing you. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, non-renew is when an insurance company decides you're too much of a risk, too much of a liability. You've done things or and we're talking like cannonball run guys they get non-renewed a lot yeah doing 120 miles an hour cross country we'll tend to do that because you know accidents can get exponentially worse at that kind of speed or if you have like a buttload of claims and i mean a lot oh offsetting the money they make i only had three claims in three years one was their fault it doesn't won't be a history about uh, oh, poor me and all the claims I had. But the point is, I got this non-renew. And many of you have as well from what I gathered. But let's get into what happened with Haggerty. Founded by Frank and Louise Haggerty. Okay. Smaller family-owned company. Much like Grundy, which at this point, uh, the only company I could recommend. Although you need a garage. Haggerty was, they, they changed that policy. That you can have a driveway car which for many was amazing. We can insure the classic car. We're not talking crazy money, but just enough to where, you know, daily regular car insurance, when they look at their numbers, their statistics, they look at a, I don't know, 1974 Pinto, and they say it's worth 500 bucks. But it ain't, we all know that. It's still worth a couple of grand, right? So you don't want some minor damage totaling out your car. The owners passed away. As far as I know, I know Frank uh, passed away. And here comes his kid, Mikhail Haggerty. Now, I can't tell you much. I can't find much. What I can uh, figure out is that there's a lot of shoulder rubbing going on. And there's some weird things happening at Haggerty. Enough, like I said, to warrant this video and to warrant my rage. I see them as traitors, not just to the car community, but even as to the country. We'll get to that. Let's start off with the other story. The other story is Uncle Tony's Garage. If you don't know the guy, follow him. I, I am an idiot compared to this man. This man knows his Mopars, knows his Fords. And I'm, I consider myself to be a Ford specialist. And again, I am an idiot compared to this man. He knows his stuff. I'm watching the greatest scam in the history of collector cars go down. Strong words. And this is priceless. I'm talking about the Black Ghost Challenger, which just sold for a million bucks. Meckham auction, night before last. A million. 
Now, I want to say he's one of the old English town drag racers. So, again, he knows things like that. Because when we're talking about the Black Ghost, uh, somewhere right here, when I saw this car, I'm like, uh, okay, you know, it's a cool car. I, I mean, I love Challengers. 70 Challengers, awesome car. And I didn't stop for a moment ask the questions you know, Uncle Tony asks. It's a scam. It's a... a and why do I say this is a scam? All right, I'm I'm not going to speculate. I'm not going to give you any speculation at all. I'm just going to lay out facts, just facts, and then yeah. you guys can make your decision as to whether or not it's a scam. Because I see the bigger picture, and nobody else has seen the bigger picture yet. Over the last couple of years, people have been asking me, oh, what about the Black Ghost Challenge? Have you ever heard of the Black Ghost? Right? And I kept my mouth shut because I didn't want to say anything derogatory. That's a problem. We tend to keep our mouth shut so we don't, you know, to not be disruptive. But I think we're at the point where we need to speak up. I was at Carlisle and the car was on display and I had never heard of it. If the car actually did have any any sort of provenance, I, I would have heard about it. Yeah, the guy was in drag racing, so he would have known. Display. It's a Rochi Survivor. 70 Hemi Real Challenger. Cheap. And the thing that caught my eye about it was that it's got a gator green top. And I'm, I'm a bug for gator green, right? So I walked over and I'm looking the car yeah, over. It's, and it's, it's Rochi. And I look at the sign and it says, you know, rough. Black Ghost Challenger, legendary street race car. All right. So I'm looking the car over and I'm like, this is not a street race car. Okay, this is, this is not a Detroit street race car. This yeah. is a, a completely bone stock 1970 Hemi Challenger RTSE, not a street race car. So as I'm looking the car over, I see that it says it's got 45,000 miles on it. And I'm like, Oof, I know what a 45,000 mile car looks like. This is 145,000. This, this yeah. one was rode hard and put away wet. Because it, it just, just the car was just, well, it had the patina of, you know, 145,000 mile car. But that's only speculation. Let's call it 45,000. Now, I will agree with that. Um, I can show you the difference between 40,000, even my ratty 73 Continental, you'll see signs that point to it not being high mileage, even though it's rusted out, brake pedal wear, seat wear, steering wheel wear, things like that. Definitely all stock. The battery is still under the hood. It has a sway bar under the front of it. It's got power steering. It's, it's optioned to the max. Like if you could click off the box, it was it, everything. You name it, this car had it which is impressive by itself. It's a street race car. So as I'm looking the car over, it's got a the owner hitch. comes over, Gregory Qualls. So now Greg seemed like a nice guy and he doesn't. I will not be so polite. I think he's a douche and he's dishonoring his father. Much like the current Haggerty leadership and that's the tie-in, we'll get to that. I don't have the heart to tell this kid, hey, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know what story your old man told or, or what you heard or anything like that, but this is like a 14 second car. I mean, on a good day, this is a 14 second car. This is a nose heavy, you know, Dodge Challenger. It's a 4,000 pound car yeah. with a completely stock engine, completely stock everything. And there's just no way that this thing ever, quote, even held its own on Woodward Avenue or any street race scene in that era. I mean, let's face it, the 70s already were starting and manufacturers knew what was coming. I, I love these cars, so it's kind of hard to say, but the only thing that Black Ghost was beating was probably a Datsun. Anyway, a little break here. Uh, just because we're talking about Dodge and Plum Crazy, the new design came out. Oh, yeah. Tired of everybody telling you you drive a boat? Well, you can reply, it's a speedboat. And this time I did every color available on the Amazon thing. So if you got a uh, Go Mango or a Sublime, you can find a color that matches your car. Now, I don't have a Plum Crazy car, but I wanted to see how it looks, and it looks good. Godfrey Qualls, who, by all accounts and everything that I can determine, was an extraordinary human being. He served his country. He was a paratrooper. He got the Purple Heart. Yeah. He became a Green Beret. He served his community. He was a Detroit motorcycle cop. 27 years on the job. He had a couple of bouts with cancer. In 2015, he knew Relatable. his time was up and he flipped the title to the car to Gregory, his son. Never telling Greg, oddly enough, that the car had a Detroit 
street racing history that it was the black ghost it was just no this is my car man and, and, and it meant a lot to me and i want you to have it now if you want all the details i do highly recommend uh uncle tony's garage but the bottom line is that there's no mention of this car being legendary only occurs after when the kid decides that i'm going to make something do something and he scripts out the entire story this uh, street racing legend it was beating everything even the prototypes that uh, detroit was putting out and running on woodward avenue R right oh, okay sure buddy but at first glance you, you know you because you know, uh, there's all this pedigree stuff right i mean haggerty quotes it as being part of the national vehicle the national historic vehicle registry right and then you realize like wait a minute haggerty runs that Haggerty decides. So what's going on is that the owner, Haggerty, get together and is like, hey, we want some stuff, some representation. They pick this guy, not the, the uh, King Daytona guy, right? Which, oddly enough, there's very little history about the uh, origin, the, the guy, right? Big Willie Robinson, okay? That's a name I will, I, I do want to remember, okay? So anybody that accuses this, oh, it's about this. No, he's a black guy. I, he actually did a, a, a cool uh, initiative, right? Trying to get kids involved in drag racing off the street onto the track. And there he is. Now, because this car didn't survive, I think that's the reason they picked the Black Ghost because... Oh, we have a car to show and we can take it to Amelia Island and Concours d'Elegance and this and that. Which, ironically, Hackety also now owns. You're starting to see a picture here. Now, the kid that came up with this story and tell, told the world, he's a film student uh, producing movies and writing scripts. And already he's got a contract with MGM for a freaking movie do you see what's happening this kid just invented a story and uncle tony's garage he dives into a lot of the depth uh especially about the technical stuff right how this car doesn't add up it's not a drag racing car it's a cruising car nice car you know rough survivor car which is great you don't see a lot of these but rather than that being the story no 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 we want to make it about how somehow there's some ism that his father had to overcome and blah, blah, blah. I guarantee you that's going to be in the movie. You know it will. It has to because that's what this, in fact, I am willing to bet that that sticker wasn't even on the car prior. Because that's a, it's, it's a very divisive uh, message, the Pan-African flag, to a lot of people, okay? This is a, one of the offshoots of like the black communist thing. And I'm not going to go into it because I'm honestly, I'm not that familiar with it. All I know is um, from the Romanian Iron Curtain side. And this was a movement trying to get Africa to go communist. They desperately wanted it. And a lot of them did, especially in the 70s and 80s. Starvation has a thing because communists are allergic to food and growing it not to mention it's insulting that you have different countries different nationalities you try to lump them all into one in the west this is all you promote it as oh this is the african flag and then you get pissed off when people think that africa is a country well it's your fault anyways that's another story but i have a feeling this is added a film student has all the uh tools to make a sticker look weathered and uh beat up because this guy, he served his community. He served his country. Why wouldn't there be an American flag there? Ah, that's, that's not the right message we want. And why is it that this message is the first thing that I think, because it, it wasn't the first thing. It's what Haggerty told me. Cultivating diversive and inclusive culture. At Haggerty, we share the road. We are united by our shared passion for driving, doubtful, our commitment to preserve car culture, big X for doubt, uh, for future generations and our desire to make a positive impact in the world. Now that I believe, they, they think it's a positive impact. We are an inclusive automotive company where all are welcomed. Um, hello? I guess I'm not welcomed. 
You know, maybe it's something, maybe it's because I'm Romanian. And belong regardless of race, gender, age, or car preference. Again, some, one of these things is the reason why, uh, you know, I'm not with Hagrid anymore, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, rooted in our values, we believe that being an inclusive company creates a vibrant climate where varying ideas and perspectives foster innovation. Not true. A Haggerty to our commitment to diversity, inclusion, and belonging. They don't call it... Um, equity right we strive to create a diverse workforce and environment where everyone can thrive as their full selves corpo speak meets progressive language uh, and then they go into all the crap that they believe in right but that's not all of it right like right here introducing the enthusiast carbon offset program and i, I found this on the forum right the spd forum and it's like pretty sure most of the customers are not on the man-made climate change wagon. I thought it was widely accepted that uh, carbon offset credits are basically a scam. Okay, these guys are pretty based among people of sound mind, yes. So, a lot of people already are talking. I'm not the first. What makes this personal for me is that I had to move eight cars, eight VINs, all that, move them over, and then be insulted on the phone. Again, timing. If you look back at my old episodes, I had a video where I talk about Aaron Robinson. I think, yeah, Aaron, that writer for their magazine pushing all this woke crap. The EV crap. Half the magazine is EVs and minivans, new cars. What the heck? Like, that's, they don't even insure those kinds of vehicles. Yet they're featured in this magazine. And I called them out for it. That's a no no. Jay Leno being one of the writers or uh, contributors to the magazine and Haggerty in general, right? I do bring up Jay Leno when he had his fire that took out like I don't know how many cars. Well, where's their policy on insuring him? You drop Jay Leno? Is that it? You drop Jay Leno? No, no of course not. But me, because I'm you know, nobody and we're nobodies here and kind of like that song with the rich man north of Richmond, it just. I'm tired of being treated like garbage and I'm tired of giving my money to people that hate my guts. I don't have a script because I, uh, I, you know, I talk from the heart, but I wanted to dig in deep. And one of the things was who owns Haggerty? What the hell happened when they were the, the transition from a private owned company that just did cars, insurance and all that to Haggerty Inc mega corporation uh, global investment portfolio with big wigs rubbing shoulders and all that and the first thing is state farm 59.26 percent that's controlling interest right there but also there's a couple of noteworthy the vanguard group okay and blackrock fund advisors okay and i don't know who owns these and it, it, there's so many they're nested so far that it's I cannot figure out who owns all these funds. But I do know, we all know about BlackRock. We know about Vanguard. And uh, I think somewhere around here is State Street Capital, right? But they have small interests. Now, this could be like uh, the teaser, the, the free taste. Hey, we'll buy your shares. But if you want us to invest more, you got to go with the, uh, you got to go with the party line. And the party line is very clear. And uh, I like one thing, like, do I need to say it? Do I have to say that this is, a, I have no problem. I know people that are, but story about the car, not the family. This is priming us for that stupid, stupid MGM movie. Because this kid wants to break out on the scene. Haggerty is powered by people who love cars. No. Our purpose. No. Our mission. Oh, of course, here, like all the people. Look at the money we're going to make. Yeah, that, 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 that right there. That's, that's your typical car owner. Right. And I don't know why they have no interest. Whatever. Oh, yeah, this is the page. This is the page that really got me, you know really got me going so this is like all the look at the um, padding on the back look at what we're doing uh, the volunteer stuff and vehicles added to the national historic vehicle registration which i don't care about anymore you've tainted that because haggerty owns that that's not like some sort of grassroots recognition hell no it's as political as a rock and roll hall of fame invested in preserving car culture no they don't 
nonprofits started. Again, I, I would like to see a list of those and see where they lean politically. Advocating safe driving. I don't know where they do that, but I haven't heard it. I this, yeah, cultivating a diverse and inclusive culture. Advancing environmental action. Investing in shared purpose. Uh, this vague language, you know, stakeholders. and Well, somewhere around here. We are committed to leading... Uh, oh, yeah, we're committed to leading the industry with strategically informed, game-changing ideas that align with our core values and harness our growing ecosystem to create a better world for our stakeholders, not the client, not even the goddamn shareholder. Who are these stakeholders? Amplifying our impact. Little buzzwords after buzzword. Earth Day and cars and caffeine. Okay? uh maintaining safe and inclusive work environments there's one that showed like this freaking diagram yeah cutting edge technology or freaking website don't even work it shows like these cogs and these gears right and the biggest one is activism maybe they already removed it <gasps> you can judge for yourself off their website this is also the article about uh the day haggerty went public and they made a big stink about it like more so than usual like who would care okay one small company right whoop they do i have a feeling that they knew that this was going to attack a demographic mostly men that are mostly conservative and have certain values and this is the way to attack us but i wanted to dive into a little bit about state farm because it's one of those companies that used to d donate to democrat uh, to republicans and you think all right they're on our site no 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 no. they donated a lot to friends of john mccain so they're that kind of republican uh this guy dan arvizu he's the chancellor this is the board of directors not the ceo the board of directors and i did a little digging on each one of these guys and here, our Vizu is talking, basically, if it um, takes resources, so be it. We'll apply those resources about, like, uh, some sort of black inclusion at uh, New Mexico State University, where he's chancellor. Because one thing about the board of directors, they all have, like, 20 freaking roles. The director here, chairman there. They, they all do, like, multiple jobs. It's almost as if there's not, you know, they want to consolidate all this economic power. I don't get why the shareholders don't complain about this because their attention must be divided. But anyway, this guy, apparently he also has some accusations against him. And I'm using this with a big grain of salt because I don't like fake accusations. But his wife, will, you know, called the cops on him. He was arrested, thrown in jail for a couple of days. And yeah, that, that's this guy. Uh, with a clear history that he wants to keep hidden. Blackmailable? Controllable? I don't know. Uh, then we got Keith Block. Ooh, we know Keith Block. This guy, one of those big time uh, money guys. Smith Point Capital, right? Oh, yeah. Um, and there was this one line on his uh, Twitter feed, right? Where he's... Um, ChatGPT not only brought AI into the conversation circles outside of tech for the first time, but it sparked an AI arms race for the companies of all for companies of all sizes. Learn what AI and the next wave of digital transformation coming with it. Bleh. Learn with AI and the next wave of digital transformation coming with it from the marketplace from Smith Point under Keith Block and his two part blah 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 blah. He is a big uh, of AI and trying to push it in these businesses, which for them doesn't mean anything about innovation. It means cutting jobs. If you work at Haggerty, you're going to lose your job probably in the next year. Don't count on that promotion. Start getting your resume ready. They're going to replace your, your butt with AI. That's because of um, old... Um, Keith Block here. Then we uh, had James Hackett. Uh, he was uh, president of Ford. Okay. And uh, Ford, right? So he was the one responsible for the big EV push and the self-driving push and the automation push. Uh, that's the same one. There were articles about saying how they lost a billion dollars and they got a change from that. Yeah. That, that same uh, Hackett. Yeah. Okay. Clearly, he figured, well... 
If they fire me from Ford, I'll just go somewhere else and impose my EV self-driving delusions. Oh, we missed uh, Bo Bo Bro uh, Bobrinskoy, Charles K. Bobrinskoy. This guy was also uh, politically active, given to friends of John McCain and so on. Uh, look at all the stuff this guy does. This is Bobrinsky, right? Yeah. Look at uh, Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library Foundation, Museum and Science of Industry, and all this. Like, you're telling me that this guy has time to focus on all these things? Or is this just consolidating a power for one global will? Looking through, you're going to see, you know, oh, Executive Vice President, Human Resources and Labor Relations, United Airlines, Kate Gebo, Gebo, whatever, Carrie Grace, President of AMN Healthcare. What the hell does that have to do with car insurance? Nothing. It's about power and money. Retired Professor of Law, Seattle University School of Law. And this guy had all sorts of scandals with him. And he's the presiding director of State Farm. And of course, State Farm having that kind of right-wing bias reputation. No, 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 no. We cannot have that. Uh, you know, ad swerve. I don't know what that is, but it sounds kind of like an advertising company. Uh, here's another guy that's Capital One Financial Corporation. Yeah, you know, look at that, sh that Bill Gates grin. You know what I'm talking about. Then we have the Pepsi guy. Yeah, that, that, that guy. Yeah, the PepsiCo family uh, company. The pattern I see is that they want to get rid of car, car type, car guys. They want to change things. They want inclusivity, even though, like, it don't get more inclusive than a car show where everybody's welcome. And we talk to each other. It doesn't matter what color your car is. No matter what country your car comes from. Like, we're, we're, we don't care about that stuff, right? Not unless it starts interfering and becoming, uh, you know, commie, commie flavored. And that's what Haggerty kind of does. So here's my thing. If you want to help me help yourself as well, get away from Haggerty. You will be, you will be insulted. You will be ridiculed. You'll be denigrated. The way they treated me, because, well, why? Because I put out a video where I had disagreeing opinions unlike what they say they want diverse thought the diverse thoughts and beliefs no they don't they don't want any of that they just want control and they want stupid people that will continue to give them money that's why things like boycotts work now they're careful they're scrubbing their websites it's been in the news they're removing the esg branding but the principles stay. So they think we're stupid enough thinking that somehow that these companies have changed. I want to tie this up and wrap it up into one thing. The Bush uh, heirs, right? The, the family that has the name Bush that started the Budweiser companies and all that. They want to buy back the brand from InBev and, you know, rebuild its reputation as being of the people and, uh, you know, well, whatever. Where? <clears throat> Where was this concern when you sold it? Haggerty, they're going to have the same thing. They take what their parents built and they unzip their fly and urinated all over their own family name. Like that kid that uh, apparently, yeah, there's also a Meekum auction scandal. Like this goes deep. Watch Uncle Tony's video. But holy moly, that kid is just ruining his dad's reputation. Because what it does, you associate one with the other. One's a grifter. Yeah, one may be a Green Beret, Purple Heart recipient and all that. But you, you don't think of that anymore. That gets buried. All you think about is how Dodge gets scammed into building a car that never existed. It's a fake. God, I'd be pissed if I bought one of those. Because, I mean, it's a scam car. Maybe in 20, 30 years, it might be an interesting footnote in an auction somewhere, whatever. But this is an embarrassment. So, of course, Dodge now is kind of, you know, forced to defend it because they look like fools. And the only tragedy is how, it was a quote where somebody said, it's not a passing of the torch. It's a torching of the past.
And that includes their own families, their own family names. And that is disgusting. And it's one of the many reasons why I will never associate with companies like Haggerty and anybody else. I'm tired. I don't want to work together because we've been doing that for so long and I'm struggling every penny. And just when I'm about to get up a little bit, you know, look a little better, work out from my broken neck and all that heart attack, but I'm still going to get up. I'm still going to fight because I got you guys by me and for new guys, I'm on board. Don't be afraid. All right. There are, there are so many of us. I can just see how Haggerty starts begging people. And my response, I know what it's going to be. Be like, sorry, you had your chance. You ruined your father's name. And there's no recovering from that. That is like family treason. How do you recover as a traitor? You don't. So Budweiser, Bush, Haggerty, uh, the Black Ghost. These are things that can never be fixed. And it was your greed or stupidity in an ideology that made you destroy it. Now you live with it and the consequences because we vote with our dollars ultimately. So I'm Alex. This is Rip Roaring Garage where oil is thicker than blood. Hemi alike. And I hope you have a rip roaring weekend. Check out the shirt, please. <laughs> um, and for those of you guys that don't know, it was congenital. I am not um, that, okay? By the way, that's the heart medication. All of that. I got to take that every single day for the rest of my life. So apparently. No, I won't. We're going to give me a baby.
you're, you're the third person I'm, I've been transferred to because it's like nobody wants to, you know, deal with the situation. Well, no, I, I, I do apologize. Uh, I am seeing... So here, here's what I can do, Alex. Um, what the, I can either place you on home, see if I can get someone right now. Um, it'll take a little bit of digging. Again, I to be honest, I think someone accidentally transferred you to the wrong department. Um, I prime, my primary job here is brand new business. Um, but, you know, so it's not yeah. typically what I handle is, you know, situations like this. So it's a little outside of my expertise. I can try and track someone down, or I can have someone give you a call back. I prefer to try to get this done right now. Okay, absolutely. This is not a good look, to be honest. Between, no, I, like, I, I, I don't want to... Every I, time someone gets kind of, kind of moved around to several different people, it's... That's it's not, like, like experience. that's not the, the, the issue I'm having. The issue is that it's non-renewed for, like, I, I get it if there's been 15 cars totaled in a year. We're not, there's no totaling. We're talking about, like, minor fender benders, and one of them is Haggerty's fault, and another one is USAA's fault, a different insurance company for a daily driver. So what I'm getting at is that Haggerty seems to not want to pay anything. If you have a claim or two, that's it. You're done. And I'm trying to find out if that's in Haggerty's policy at this point. It certainly isn't from my perspective, because obviously the whole point of the insurance company is if something does happen, well, I'll make sure that you're taken care of. Then why am I not, um, um, why am I not renewed? And let me see if I can't get someone online who can kind of go over your policy and we'll see if they can take care of you, okay? All right. Cable companies will make you go through retention and all that, and it takes hours to try to cancel your cable contract because they want to keep your business. Haggerty seems to be throwing away good paying customers. Yeah. Um, 
so what's I mean I've heard of uh, non-renew for like guys that do cannonball runs or have totaled you know Ferrari Enzos or whatnot. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of old cars and a couple of Dodges. Like, what, what, what's the deal? Uh, unfortunately, it really comes down to just the uh, just the claims that are on here. Because um, we look back approximately three years. Um, How many claims are there? Um, like, two, three, four, five. Uh, six were on there currently. The other ones have dropped off. Okay. So six claims in three years. Mm -hmm. And shouldn't this count as pre-event? Because three of those claims are like one event. Mm -hmm. And one of the claims, the one with the bus, was with the batteries. That was because of a Giro, the company you guys contract. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. That's what I'm saying. I don't. I don't get this. this something's not adding up. Like uh, a company doesn't cut somebody for making money, like, you guys paid significantly less than what I pay you guys. And the only reason I do it because of the agreed value, because I already got a quote from USAA, and the premium is going to be three grand. Is this because of the new direction the company's going? Like, the whole ESG thing, or is that it? No, no, this is, uh, this is something that we've had kind of in place for a while. Well, I've been with you guys for how long now? No. Oh, let's see. Uh, five years. Okay, in five years. And I've continuously added cars with you guys, which is another aspect, too. You guys go by number of claims. So what happens, like, you know, somebody like Jay Leno had a fire, like 20 cars get damaged. Oh, you drop him, too? Um, <laughs> like this is one, like the more cars, obviously the more statistical likelihood of things happening that you will use said insurance. Otherwise, then I don't. Ins I just go with the bare minimum, and just go with cheap and pay out of pocket for whatever happens. Like that's the the feel I'm getting from you guys. Yeah, I understand, I understand what you're saying. And where you're coming from. Oh. Between this, the magazine that is constantly, you know, I don't know, get to feel like you want to rid yourselves of people like me. No, not at all. Um, well, I'm, I, I knew that would be cancer. Uh, well, uh, the, the guys at the driver's club don't seem to think that, unless it's an EV or some contracted out SUV, because that's all that magazine is turned into. And I feel that Maybe it's a coincidence. The fact that I voice my concerns in a public manner gets a little bit of attention, and then all of a sudden I get non-renewed. Uh, it doesn't seem like, I mean, it's like I said, very coincidental, but... Yeah, I'm just looking through this, it literally just comes down to those claims. That's the nothing else is factored in. And claims that I haven't even taking money or anything, so, because I made a phone call, is that it? Just because the claims were made, yeah. Okay, so I might as well go ahead and cash the money, right? I mean, I still got till the end, might as well. I mean, that's what I paid Haggerty for. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, makes me kind of dumb. Like, I file a claim, you guys count it, I decide I'm not going to go ahead with that claim, and then you say, no, it still doesn't matter. We don't want your business. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, because I do see that some of these were, uh, appear to be minor, but it doesn't go by that amount. It goes by the, the, the number of claims. Well, I'm just going to say this. After this uh, policy is over, I'm never returning to Haggerty. These are the kinds of things that we need to know as in the car community. Mm -hmm. Okay? I, I understand. So, um, I'm looking, I'm, I just noticed you guys uh, are owned by State Farm. Maybe this is their way to destroy the company and force people to go with them. 
that's not going to happen either, but that's another story. Stuart Farm is just one of our uh, partners that we're yeah, working they, with. They own 59% of the Haggerty shares. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. Either they're doing something where they want you out of the business, more or less competition, but either way, th this is something that should not have happened. You know, I've been with you guys before the IPO, and there has been a clear change in service and just the quality overall. And that's unfortunate because I really liked, um, you know, having you guys. You know, the magazine was cool, but everything has changed since then. Mm -hmm. So, is there anything else you can tell me? Uh, I probably look. I just. You know, I think I, I think I said, you know, it, it really just comes down to the claims. Uh, it's unfortunate mm -hmm. because it's, it doesn't have to do with, like, the amount of the claims because it, you have a, mm -hmm. a number of them that are just very minor. Um, and so it's probably something I'm going to do a little more investigating into as well. Mm -hmm. um, as far as me, I'm, like I said, this is the last attempt I'm, I'm making. Uh, they're willing to take on this collection. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about making small claims. Like, that's the whole point of an insurance company. Like, mm -hmm. you know, storms happen. They get documented. I feel like you're treating me like I'm so, sort of, you know, like uh, committing fraud or any, something like that. I'm, I apologize. I mean, uh, that's not the intent. No. Something feels like it's off. And that's something, like I said, at this point, uh, it's like I don't want to be made to, you know, to feel like I'm some sort of pariah or whatever. And it's unfortunate, but that's just the way it is, I guess. Yeah, I, I can understand uh, what you're saying, and I definitely would, I'm going to pass this information along just because it's, it's not the intent, and unfortunately, if you feel that way, then we need to obviously take a closer look. To what, to what point, though? You're still not going to renew me, so I don't really see what... Like... It's almost like rubbing salt in the wound, you know, what, I'm going to get a phone call, oh yeah, by the way, um, we were, you know, hasty in our judgment and our reaction, can you come back to us? Like, I'm not going to make that effort, this is a, a big effort, you know, we're talking eight cars plus two others plus another one, that's a lot of vins to read, it takes me about a couple of hours to, to transfer, I'm not going to do that again, you know, re realize that, right? Mm -hmm. I you know, it makes me feel, it makes me look like a fool. Uh, you know, a company will treat me like garbage and then say, oh, yeah, by the way, once, you know, come give us your money. <laughs> like, no, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> so, uh, it is what it is. Anyways. So, if there's nothing else you can tell me off the, off my record there, then... your time. Alright. Thank you for the feedback. At least I apologize. It's not the result that you wanted. I'm not sure this is the result anybody wants to hear, but it, it is what it is. Correct. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Well, there you go.